Facebook Livers. Welcome to the class. Um, we are going to get ourselves moving. I'm going to do my usual check just to make sure that I'm not upside down. Oh, no, that looks good. Oh, I can see it. Isn't that marvellous? Huh. Look at that. Like, technology didn't beat me this morning. It's a marvellous thing. So, let's get ourselves moving. I've got you guys on the big screen. I've got you guys on my little screen. And um, we'll allow ourselves to get moving. So, oh, hang on. Making sure you can see me once I get moving. So let's allow ourselves to bring ourselves onto our mats, uh, or bring ourselves to standing, should I say. Just feet to come underneath our hips. So we've got the toes pointing forwards and the feet are just underneath the hips. ourselves to find a nice, stable posture there. So allowing ourselves to just zone in on our deep abdominal muscles, deep back muscles and the pelvic floor. We're going to be allowing the breath to come and go nice and gently in and out of the rib cage, um, allowing the breath to really come and go like the tide, let it flow in and flow out without any stops or starts. So let's allow um, that nice posture to begin with. So feet underneath the hips, toes pointing forwards, and we've got a sense that our waist is right in the center of our two feet. Sometimes it takes a little bit of shifting from side to side or forwards and back to just find that place where you feel as though you're really well stable in the center of the two feet. Good. Whatever you can do, we'll just allow the eyes to close and we'll allow ourselves to just release from any external concerns, see if we can let go of them for this next hour. People running around around you in your house, and you don't want to close your eyes in case someone runs past you. That's fine as well. Just allow the eyes to stay open, and we'll just allow ourselves to take some nice deep breaths. So, allowing that breath to come and go nice and gently in and out of the rib cage. Breathe really deeply here. Let's allow that breath to come low into the ribs. We'll allow that breath to expand into the back of the rib cage, the side of the rib cage, as well as the front of the rib cage. So you feel as though you're really breathing into your arms. <clears throat> Morning, Facebookers. Just hip distance apart. And we've got that nice breath coming and going deeply. Let's see if we can allow that breath to go a little bit deeper. So we'll allow the breath to flow right down into the pelvis. That breath to go quite deep. I want you to just take a moment to see if you can really release into your hip flexors. So we allow the hips to become nice and soft. We're not gripping into the hips. And at this point, just take a moment to visualise the bottom of the pelvis, pelvic floor muscles, and we're just going to let them be soft for a moment. And just notice what happens in the rest of the body when we allow ourselves to be nice and soft and released there. Steady place on the feet. We're going to gently draw up through the arches of the feet and allow the knees to stay soft. Allow our pelvis to gently tip forwards and gently tip back. Now you can imagine that the pelvis is like a bucket of water filled to the top. We're gently tipping out the front of the bucket, tipping out the back of the bucket, taking it through those two extremes. That place where it feels as though our bucket of water is nice and level. Me, and we're going to allow ourselves to draw the hip bones towards one another. So as if you're tightening up your belt. To a, a ten, not, um, 10 notches on your belt. So the tightest notch that you can get on your belt, you're going to squeeze your tummy in. And then breathe in and let the belt release. And then breathe out, take it to the tenth notch on your belt. Tightest it can be. Good, and release. 
fall back to that 10th notch. And as you release, I want you to just release to the fifth notch. So it's not completely relaxed anymore, but it's not gripping in so tight that you, you can't do anything else. So it's just a supportive grip. And with that connection in place, we'll allow the breath to come and go nice and gently in and out of the rib cage. Expand into the ribs. Let's allow the shoulders to gently lift. And we'll roll the shoulders gently back and down. Lift the shoulders up. Roll the shoulders gently back and down. knees towards one another, we'll sink the shoulders down the back, taking a nice deep breath for me there, we'll allow the right arm to float forwards and up, breathing in as the arms float back down and then we'll change over to the other side, opposite arm floats forwards and up, breathing in as the arm floats back down, good, keep that going for me. We've got that sense of connection through the tummy. And as one arm floats down, the other one starts to lift up. And finishing off there, let the arms float gently down by our sides. Taking a deep breath for me there, allow the right ear to dip down towards the right shoulder. Tipping the head up and tipping the head over to the opposite side. And over to that right side. And the second side. and allow the head to gently rotate round to the right side and then coming back through the centre we'll rotate round to the second side on each side comes into the centre let's take a little roll down through the spine so we'll release through the top of the head and we'll start to gently roll down through the vertebrae, coming down bit by bit, piece by piece. We'll take a nice deep breath at the bottom. And then breathing out as we roll back up through the spine. The shoulders when we get there, roll the shoulders back and down, let both arms float forwards and up. Breathing in as the arms float back down and again releasing through the top of the head, rolling through the spine. At the bottom. And breathing out as we roll up through the spine. Head comes on top, we lift the shoulders, roll the shoulders back and down, both arms float forwards and up. Breathing in as the arms float back down and we'll take a little softening through the knees there, let the arms open out to the side. Lovely, good. And again, rolling down through the spine. that little bend through the knees this time we're just going to be really aware of allowing our tailbone to stay descending down towards the floor so as the arms open out let the tailbone descend down keep the head floating upwards just the knees bend good and again so noticing that some of us will take a really big bend through the knee and that's marvellous. Others of us just won't because our Achilles will be shorter and um, there'll be more tightness through the body. So don't worry if you're not squatting very far if it's quite a little bend through the knee. That's fine. Just allow that to be a sense of the knee bending and seeing if we can keep the pelvis nice and stable. Good. Hold it for me there. Take a little side bend. So we're coming up and over to the right side. Yep, loving it. Top arm if you feel ready to.
as we come into the center, let's allow the fingertips to draw in towards one another and we'll take a little spine twist. So pelvis stays nice and still, we'll allow the rib cage to gently rotate around to one side and we're breathing in as we return back to the center. And then we're rotating around to the opposite side. Breathing in as we come back to the center. Good. So if you can see, I'm trying to keep my hips nice and still and it's just the rib cage that's taking that rotation. I'm not bringing the pelvis with me. And we'll allow the eyes to stay fixed on the fingertips or um, if you've got the eyes closed, uh, just allow the hands to stay in line with your chin. His arms just in front of us. So the hands come down just in front of us. We've got the shoulders gliding down the back with a sense of strength through the core. We'll allow the arms to open out to the side. Finding a little bit of range of movement here. So the shoulders can squeeze towards one another. Arm opens out. Breathing in as the arms return. Keep that going for me. Allow that right arm to float around the head, around and above the head, and you keep whatever you've got balanced in your hand, balanced in your hand, so you don't spill it over your head as you bring the hand around. off there let's allow ourselves to push through the heel of the hands shoulders can glide down the back now tailbones descending down let's take some little circles we've got three and two and direction three two and one give it a good shake out a little bit of balance work so taking a nice deep breath, we've got the hips nice and level, let's allow the right foot to gently lift away from the floor. Rotating the foot gently down, changing over to the other side. Rotating gently down, good. Changing over to the other side, for the first side we allow the leg to lift and float gently down, changing over to the other side. knee to lift and then we'll, we'll sweep the leg out to the side. So we've got the knee lifting. As the foot floats down, keep the foot flexed for me and push the foot out to the side. Changing over to the other side. So the leg lifts. We keep the hips nice and stable, nice and level and the knee, uh, the foot opens out to the side. Beautiful. Good. And again we lift. And the outside of the foot is pushing away. Wonderful. Pushing away. Next challenge if you want it. So still we're going to lift the right leg. And then we push the foot down. The, knee, the leg opens out to the side. And then, as you bring that leg in, you're going to push it back behind you. There's a little squeeze in the buttock as you bring the leg back in, changing over to the other side. So it's front side and back. Side. Beautiful. And then pushing that leg away. Push, give it a good squeeze in the bottom. And come on in. Yeah, you need a bit of space. So I'm moving further away from my sofa because I'll keep hitting it with my foot, allowing that leg to open out to the side, bringing the leg in and pushing back behind you, changing over to the other side, we allow the knee to lift, 
outside of the foot pushes away. Push that heel away, lovely, well done guys. Good. From there, let's find a little bit of a rise work. So we'll just take a moment to allow the heels to gently lift and then we'll float the heels back down. So allowing ourselves to think about length upwards, thinking about getting nice and tall and just gradually allowing more of the heel to lift away from the floor. Um, let's see about pushing our big toe into the ground to allow us to stay really integral with the ankle. So the ankle stays in line with the leg. Beautiful. Just take that right leg back behind you and we'll take a little calf stretch. Those, calf, those heel lifts get me in the calf almost immediately. So the right foot's behind us. Let's take a moment to just lift the heel and push down. Lift the heel. And we'll do that a few times to get really into that foot, like a little massage for the foot and a little lengthening for the um, calf and the Achilles. Ooh, feels nice. Hold this next one down there, push in through the heel, take a moment to bend a little bit deeper into that front knee. A quick superman, so taking the weight on to the front leg, push forward, see if we can bring ourselves parallel to the floor. As you can be, and then bring the feet back together, changing over to the other leg, pushing that heel down. Now, I find it easier to balance in this one if you've got your feet slightly apart. So you've got like a train track for your right leg and a train track for your left leg. Um, and there's a little bit of space, like hip distance space between them. Even a little bit wider will make it a little bit more stable. Nice deep breath, the heel lifts and lowers. And lift and lower. Let's do that a few times, getting into that foot. the heel down and then bring the weight into that front knee. I think this this toe must be, um, this sock must be a bit loose because I feel like I'm getting further and further away. Nice deep breath, see if we can really extend into that stretch in the calf and then coming into Superman so we'll push the weight forwards over the front of the foot and stretching out, see if we can get the hips level to the floor as we reach through the fingers, reach through the toes and release in there. Nice one, well done. Good, bringing the feet just underneath the hips. I'm lengthwise to my mat now so that I'm gonna bring myself onto the floor. But we'll take a few roll downs into push up if we can. So knees allowing, um, wrists allowing. But let's say we'll take three push ups before we bring ourselves to the floor. So we'll take a nice deep breath from there. As we breathe out, drop the head and start to roll gently down through the spine. As we're coming down through the spine, we're going to allow ourselves to walk out to push-up position. Now, it can be a modified push-up or it can be a full push-up, depending on how you feel. We'll take the hands wider than the shoulders and the chest is going to lower to the space between the hands. We breathe out as we push up and away from the floor and then we're walking the hands back in. So remember, that within these sessions, we're looking to find a place where we challenge ourselves, but just before the struggle. So the struggle in your push-up would be if you start to shudder or you feel as though you can't manage the full push-up. Nice deep breath there. Breathing out as you roll down through the spine. Softening at the knees, walking the hands gently forwards. Taking the hands wide at the shoulders. Now the further forward we go through the hips, the more of a challenge it's going to be in the upper body. So finding that place where you feel as though you're working to a challenge. And then as we roll up through the spine, we've still got that flexibility work through the vertebrae, seeing if we can find that articulation. 
if you find there's a particular sticky bit in your vertebra who's a bit that just won't work for you won't move for you just see if you can give that area some extra breath and some extra time we'll lower the knees if they were lifted and we'll just allow ourselves to sit back onto our heels and we'll lengthen the arms in front of us so for some of us it's it's better to allow the knees to go wide there and then we can allow ourselves to really release back the hands over to the right side and allow the left hand to reach across. As we reach across with the left hand we're going to push into the left hip. Deep breath, walking the hands across to the other side of the mat and then we'll reach the right arm across us, push, sort of feel as though you're pulling back through the right hip as you, as you reach through the right hand. Nice and deep with the breath there. Taking the hands back in. Let's bring the knees underneath our hips and bring the hands underneath the shoulders. We'll take a cat stretch and we'll combine the cat stretch with our thread in the needle. So we'll start off by taking that nice action through the spine. So we'll push the back up into the sky, scooping in through the tummy. And then we'll lengthen out back to that tabletop position. So I realise this top isn't very helpful. It doesn't look like I'm doing anything in my tummy at all. I am working to scoop it upwards though. And we reach and lengthen out and away. Shoulders really glide down the back each time. Last one. And then we'll come into our thread in the needle. Taking a breath when we get there. The right hand lifts and we weave the right hand through the gap between the hand and the knee and we breathe in as we draw the arm back in and then we can change over to the other side let the arm lift weave the hand through and bringing the arm back in so each time if you want to you can add a little lift up for the sky before you weave the hand through to the other side. I promise we'll combine the two. So this time let's allow ourselves to reach the arm up for the sky, feed the arm through and then bringing the hand back together push the back up into the sky, head drops down and then we return back to neutral. Left arm feeds its way through so we reach on up and rotating through. Into the sky, head drops between the arms. So one more on each side, let me see how that's going. Beautiful, lovely. on that second side we'll allow ourselves to come down onto the floor come to a lying position elbows to go wide there and let the fingers point forwards lovely good so we're going to allow the nose to hover just an inch away from the floor we're going to allow the tailbone to stretch gently away from us. So we're taking a lying position on our front and the hands are going wide. The, the hands are stretched nice and wide. Good. The nose hovers just an inch away from the floor. We're scooping in through the tummy. Now let's take a deep breath. Let the shoulders glide down the back. Let the head extend out and away. And then we'll breathe in as we float back down. So what I'm looking for is a little bit of upper body movement. 
I want you to see if you can keep your lower back really nice and long. So the tailbone is kind of trying to reach towards your heels. Press into the hands. We're just going to allow the arms to maybe touch the floor, but maybe hover an inch away from the floor. Put the hands on top of one another and let your forehead rest onto your hands. So from there, we're squeezing in through the tummy. We're going to breathe out and we're going to stretch the right leg away from us, lengthening and extending the leg away. Breathe in as we float the leg back down. Changing over to the other side, stretch the leg away as if you're trying to stretch towards the skirting board. Breathe in as the leg returns. Let's keep that going and we'll change legs each time. And then actually, if you're feeling ready to, as one lowers, the other one is lifting. Now that's gonna keep, we're gonna really need to work to keep the belly button squeezing and the tailbone stretching away. So we don't want the lower back to be pressing into the floor. Uh, sorry, we don't want the belly to be pressing into the floor um, and the pelvis to be tilting. Floating the legs back down. Let's allow ourselves to roll onto one side. Preferably meaning that you come to roll to face me. But that's of course optional. Now, because you've all got cameras in different places, it means that you're all on different sides. So just take a mental note right now of which side you've started on. And allow your head to be resting down onto the arm there. Good. So the shoulders are on top of one another and the hips are on top of one another. <clears throat> and take a nice deep breath. Check that you can see your toes if you can normally see your toes when you're standing. You may want the top hand to rest down onto the floor to begin with. See how you feel. Nice and deep with the breath. Lovely. Now as we breathe out, that top leg's going to stretch away from us. I want you to feel as though you're being pulled the leg is being pulled towards the skirting board, so you're like being pulled out of your waist. Breath, as we breathe out, the bottom leg is going to reach and lengthen also. So you've got both the top leg and the bottom leg reaching. Now, that might be quite a big challenge for you to have both legs reaching. If you are feeling this knobbly bit of your, your thigh bone is feeling uncomfortable, I want you to stretch it further away from you. So rather than thinking, oh, I'll lift higher, um, think about lifting longer. Huh, that doesn't really make sense, but you know what I mean. Stretch further away. Then you're going to think about bringing this top hand off and lifting the hand by your side. Taking a breath, let that top shoulder really glide down the back. Now, if you're, you're there in this position thinking, this is all right, Emma, I can stay here all day. Let's see if we can challenge the balance now. <clears throat> so we'll allow that top leg to move forwards. And then draw the leg back. And then allow the leg to lift. And draw back. This time, make it a little bit bigger. So the leg pushes a bit further forwards and then draws back and allow that top leg to lift a little higher and then draw back. We're going to keep that going, seeing if each time you can make it a little bit bigger. Where is that place where you feel like, oh, I'm going to need to, if I go any further, I'll have to grab, grab the floor. As you lift up, we want to make sure that the toe isn't suddenly turning upwards, but the knee still pointing forwards. Let's have one more here. Bottom leg doing a sneaky backwards movement. And floating the legs down there. Ah, oh, really drawing the knees in. Tip that top hip forward, scooping in through the tummy. Top knee lifts and lowers. We lift and lower. We'll take three more like that, trying to keep the hip as still as you can. Good. Do 
the toes, uh, the knees together and lift the toes, lift and lower. Get really nice tight squeeze in the tummy. This one up there, allow the top knee to lift and then let's stretch that top leg away from us and draw in the toe back in. Bring the knee back down. Two more like that. Lift, extend away, hip stays nice and still. And floating down, last one. And floating gently down. Squeezing in through the tummy. Now that top leg's gonna take a little cycle in action. So the top foot pushes forwards. We push back and around, and foot pushes forwards, back and around. Taking three more like that, and then we'll reverse our circle. Taking that back in the opposite direction, push through the heel of the foot, circling forwards and around. Pushing back through the heel of the foot and around. So it's a little squeeze in the bottom as we go. Nice. Yeah, let's bring that leg in. Give it a little hug in, maybe. Holding on, if you can, across the front of the foot. Bring the foot close to the bottom and then we'll stretch the knee away from us. So some of us find it difficult to grab the foot, in which case you can always wrap a band um, or belt or a towel around your um, ankle. Breathe nice and deeply there. So we'll allow the knee to stretch away from us. We'll allow that shoulder to just glide down the back. Your head's really nice and heavy. Resting down on that arm so you're not creating more stress there. Good. And releasing. Let's take that opening up like a book. So pop a cushion under your head if you've got one close to hand. From there, top arm gently opens. Eyes are fixed on the hand. And we the arm draws, draws back in. Now, if you want to, you can take your chalk circles as well. So we can combine, you can have a little play around with the two. The top hand will stay connected to the floor and will allow it to gently circle around, making like a semicircle around and above and around the head. And then drawing gently backwards. So have a little play with it. When you do your semicircles, there'll be a moment where you feel quite an intense stretch across the, the chest, um, the side of the um, chest that's got the arm circling. Um, and some people find that that creates a little sort of blip moment, a little hoppy moment where the fingers can't stay in contact with the floor. And that's okay. We'll just work on that. Or, or more comfortable for you to do the opening up like a book you're getting a really nice sense of movement through the spine there which is all marvellous good from there come onto your back and just allow the leg that you've been using to come across the knee so the leg that sort of was on top is going to come across the knee you'll let that knee um, fall open to the side and then if you can do, we're going to weave our hands around the leg that's got the foot on the floor and we're going to ease that leg in close towards us. Breathe nice and deeply. So again, some people find that if they've got like a band or a, a belt or something, they can wrap that around that leg um, and then they'll be able to 
grab hold of the ends of it and bring it in closer. Try not to wrap it around the other leg as well because otherwise you're bringing that leg in towards you rather than allowing it to move further away. Think that we could do a little bit on our back before we do the other side. Can we remember which side we've been on? Let the legs release on down. Now, just move your cushion slightly to the side so you've still got it as a landmark to know which side you've just been working on. Honestly, I'm that forgetful these days that I will not remember what side I've just done. So, we'll allow our pelvis to rest down onto the floor. And we're going to imagine that on our abdomen is a clock. And 12 o'clock is coming to the belly button and uh, 6 o'clock is down at the pubic bone. So what I want you to do is just take a moment to gently rock from 12 o'clock to 6 o'clock. 12 o'clock to 6 o'clock. Now, as you do that, I know it's quite hard to see on the, on the camera, but I want you to imagine that your pelvis is really heavy. Your pelvis is kind of stuck on the ground. And you're just rocking the pelvis from those two positions. And this will allow the back to push into the floor and then release away from the floor. So we've got those two movements going on. I find that when I push the back into the floor, I've got a real scoop sensation through the pelvic floor and the deep abdominals. As I push forwards, it's a much more vulnerable feeling. It's a kind of doming through the tummy. It feels much more weak through the abdomen. So th that's just my observation. And then let's allow ourselves to come from side to side. So we've got a nine and three action going on. So we're tipping to three o'clock. We're tipping to nine o'clock. And nine. Now, can we rock around the clock? So let's allow ourselves to do 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 9. Back around the clock. I know you're all, you're all singing that song in your head now, which is marvellous. We'll take that circle back the other way. Why does rock around the clock remind me of happy days? Just let me know. Was it somewhere on the theme tune or, or, or used in that programme? Circle. Now we're going to allow ourselves to come back to a place where hips and pubic bone are level and our clock would be absolutely level. So once we're there, keeping our clock face really nice and level, we're going to draw in through those deep core muscles. Let your rib cage soften into the floor. Let the shoulders rest on down. Let the head rest down into the floor. And there's a sense of space between the chin and the chest, but with that, with a sense of allowing the back of the neck to be nice and long. Well, let's squeeze in through the tummy and we'll glide the right leg away from us. Breathing in as the leg returns. And then we'll change over to the opposite leg. As we do, the opposite arm can lengthen up and over the head. Breathe in as the arm and the leg return. Change in arm and leg. Drawing back in. Good, this time let's stretch the leg away from us. As the leg draws in, bring it to a 90 degree angle above the hip socket and then let that knee just float open to the side. Don't let your clock tip towards um, three o'clock and then drawing the leg back in and floating down. Change to the other side. Opposite leg slides away. Breathe in as the leg returns. Keep your clock face nice and stable as the knee opens out to the side and softening back in and floating down. Good, keeping that going for me. Right. Leg returns and floating gently down. 
So if anybody wants to, you can do this with your two legs under position. You can allow both knees to be lifted and you can allow yourself to work with um, just alternating sides, just as we're doing, but the other leg can stay lifted. I want you to make sure if you're working with two legs lifted, you've got an imprinted spine. Those of us that have got one leg lifted, we're working to keep that clock face level, which means we've got that natural curve in the lower back. grounded finishing off there for me and come into stillness good let's take a little shoulder bridge from here um, we'll have a play with it we haven't done a hamstring stretch yet which usually I would do before a shoulder bridge because some of us get a bit of cramp through our hamstrings so if you need to give them a rub before you get going just to wake them up and let them know they're gonna have to uh, step up to the mark feel free to so we've got the feet just hip distance apart and the knees are bent. Coming in and out of that neutral position again. So we're pressing the lower back into the floor. We're going to tip the tailbone up. We're going to peel the spine away from the ground. And we're going to keep that moving until knees, hips and shoulders come into line with one another. Beautiful. When we get there, we take a breath. And then we float the vertebrae back down one by one. Turn back to neutral. Now, as we're rolling up, the glute muscles, the bottom muscles, should be helping us a little bit, but without ripping on for dear life here. So what we'll do is we'll take, when we, get, when we do our next one, when we get to the top, we'll do just a few little pelvis lifts to really switch into the bottom and start to make it wake up. So... We're going to get to that place where knees, hips and shoulders are in line. And then we're going to push upwards, give it a little squeeze in the bottom and come back to that neutral position. Then two more like that, squeeze and back to neutral, squeeze and back to neutral. From there, replacing the vertebrae, down we come. Sequence again. So we'll allow ourselves to come all the way up through the vertebrae and we'll do a little bottom lift. Lift and soften, lift and soften, lift, hold it there, bring the arms up towards the sky or all the way over the head and then we'll float the vertebrae back down. Looking to find that articulation through the spine. As you bring the arms by your side, if you want to, you can take a little abdominal curl up. So we're curling up and breathing in as we float back down. Let's do that again, pressing the lower back into the floor. Coming up bit by bit. Now we're going to add on before we add our arms in. So we're taking those three little bottom lifts. Lift and lower. Lift, it's a squeeze in the bottom. Now this time, you come back to that softness, stabilise through one side of the pelvis and allow one leg to lift. It might be that the foot doesn't lift all the way away from the floor and that's okay. Floating that foot down, it might be just the heel that lifts. Change to the other side. The hips are staying nice and still. Floating that foot down, bring the arms up towards the sky. Or maybe all the way over the head and then floating back down again through the vertebrae bit by bit, piece by piece. We allow ourselves to return back to neutral, taking that little abdominal curl up. Breathing in as we float back down. Good. And again, push the lower back into the floor, tip the tailbone up. Here, squeeze the bottom. Squeeze the bottom. Hold it for me in that neutral position. Lift one leg. Now, if it's going up towards the sky and you want a bit of extra challenge, lower into line with your knee. Lift. Float the foot back down. Changing over to the other side. We lift. Lower down. And we lift. Bend the knee. Floating down. Beautiful. Let's allow this to be our last one. And then we're going to allow ourselves to roll all the way up to sitting. If you're thinking, I'm not going to get up to sitting like that, Emma, come on to one side. Bring yourself up to sitting. 
and lift in tall when we get there. Let's allow ourselves to come round to steaming, come to a seated position. And we'll start with bringing the feet together and the knees can go wide. So we're making a diamond shape with the legs. If your knees don't like that, by all means take the legs wide instead. We'll let those shoulders just descend down the back and then find a sense of connection through the core muscles. Take a breath and allow the right ear to dip down towards the right shoulder. Lift on up and over to the other side. So most of us will feel that with the legs in this position you're getting a little bit of a challenge through the hip. Feet in a bit closer you might find more of a stretch if they're in a bit tighter. Head's going for me if you know that your neck needs a good stretch out from here. If you want more, you can allow yourself to gently ease yourself forwards. Gently forwards. Now when I was a dancer, we weren't allowed to hold our feet in this stretch when I was doing my dance training. You weren't, you, you weren't allowed to hold onto your feet because apparently you were going to sickle your feet. I didn't even know what that meant, but I knew we weren't allowed to do it. So I feel really naughty whenever I hold my feet in this stretch. But yogis do it all the time, so I reckon we're all right. Lifting nice and tall. Let's take the legs wide. Now, when we get there, take a moment to find both your sits bones. I'm not going to mention that you might want to move around to just release the fleshy parts and, and get the, the, the bones into the floor. There it is, nice. So when we get there, let's just lift the shoulders, roll the shoulders back and down. And again, for a lot of us, just finding this position will create quite a lot of challenge for the hip. Working for you, you go back to that diamond shape. Yeah. And then once we're there, we'll allow the head to gently rotate round, looking to the right side, coming back to the centre, rotating gently round to the other side as we find that we can drop the shoulders down the back there. Come back to the centre, we're going to lengthen really nice and tall like a puppet on a string, Drawing the hands in together, shoulders glide down the back, strength through those core muscles and we'll let the rib cage gently rotate round to the right side. And we'll breathe in as we return back to the centre. Rotating round to the opposite side. Breath in as we return back to the centre. Lovely. to find that actually oh my gosh this is causing too much strain in my back and I'm pulling backwards maybe bend the knees in a little bit to give yourself a little bit um, of release and a little bit more length through the spine finishing off there releasing well done give it a good jiggle out I know that that seated position is not everybody's happy place so well done for sticking with it now, we're going to take our capital C exercise. What I want you to do is I want you to point your feet towards the place where your head was a minute ago, where your cushion still is. So your feet are going to go towards the cushion. Let's see if I can get this right. Now, behind you is some length so that when we come down to the floor, we can take our capital C, uh, we can take our side leg kicks from there. So let's lift nice and tall, hands come round the backs of the thighs, we're lengthening up tall and the shoulders are gliding down the back. As if you've been punched in the stomach in slow motion, you're going to scoop in through the tummy, tilt the tailbone under and curve into the lower back. And then we're going to lengthen up nice and tall. And curve into the lower back. If you don't need to grip onto the thighs, the arms can lengthen out in front of you and that's a marvellous thing. To hold on, that's fine. Let's see if we can make that a really gentle connection rather than gripping on for dear life because no one wants little fingerprint bruises on the backs of their legs at the end of class. 
gliding down the back. For me guys. Now if you're happily working in this exercise, um, I want you to come down, hold it for me down there, you can either keep going if you prefer, and if you feel ready to, the right arm lifts, we stay down here, and then we bring the arm back forwards, and then the left arm comes up and over, breathing in and out, and back. If this is not working for you, keep the capital C going. Keep moving gently through it. That looks nice, Becky. Good. Now that final one to bring us all the way to the floor. Good catch, guys. Well done. Coming all the way down. And release. Well done. Yeah, you all know we've got to do the other side still though. So let's roll onto our side. Hopefully we've managed it that you now just roll onto your side and you're facing me again. Lengthening in that nice long, long line. Hips are on top of one another, shoulders are on top of one another. Maybe the top hand is resting down onto the floor. We'll take a nice deep breath and as we breathe out, we're going to stretch the legs away from us. And then lengthening the legs out and away. Lovely. And we'll see if we can, in that position, take the hand and rest it by our side. It might work that way or we might need to hold onto the um, floor still. So we'll stretch and lengthen those legs away. Let's take that little L shape with the legs. So the top leg moves gently forwards and then draws back. And then we take a little lift and lower. Good. And then each time, seeing if you can make that a little bit bigger. Seeing if you can get a little bit bigger, a little bit further forwards. And we're finding that challenge place just before the struggle. I float the legs down, soften in through the knees. And we'll allow that top hip to tip gently forwards. With a nice connection through the tummy, top knees, then a lift and lower, lift and lower. And the knee lifts, lowers. Good, we've got three more. Be nice and still, look to really stabilize into the pelvis. Knees glued together and both feet lift. Um, squeeze and in through the tummy, both feet lift. Next one to toes stay up there, hold the toes up, let the knee lift, let the leg extend away. Draw the toes back in and let the knees float down. And again, knee lifts, toe extends away. Draw the toe back in, bring the knees back together. We've got two more. We lift. Floating the legs down from there. Let's take our cycle in with the top leg. So hips stay nice and still, squeezing in through the tummy, push that foot forwards, and then cycling around, and drawing back in, and pushing forward, circling around, lovely. So we've got the pelvis as still as we can make it, and there is gonna be a little squeeze in the bottom. Last one. And then we'll reverse that circle. Push the heel back and then circling around. Lovely. Push through that heel. 
circling around. Then taking hold of the foot and see if we can take a nice long stretch there. Foot comes close to the bottom and we stretch the knee away from us. Nice one. Yeah, lovely. Good. And we allow that knee to really press away. So the knee is stretching down towards sort of the skirting board where you were pointing your foot a moment ago. And at the same time, you're pressing your pelvis forward. The hip is pressing forwards to get that nice stretch down the front of the thigh and front of the hip. Yeah, give it a shake out if it needs it, that's fine. And releasing from there, let's take that opening up like a book. So grab that cushion that should be by your feet and then pop it under your head. Make sure there's the length of the cushion behind you or, or, or some cushion behind you. Nice deep breath, top arm gently opens. Eyes are fixed on the hand. Breathe in as we draw the arm back. As always, if my breathing doesn't make any sense to you, then by all means, just allow yourself to find the breath that works for you, allowing it to come and go nice and gently, and that would be perfect. To add in that opening, uh, that chalk circle, we can allow the fingertips to stay connected to the floor circling our way around and then drawing the arm back circle the arm around more there off there pushing down on your hands let's bring ourselves up to that seated position and we're going to come into a kneeling position once we're there time to bring yourself to that position because their heads bit we've been on the floor for some time we don't want to end up having a head rush lovely from there we're going to allow ourselves to tuck the toes under and we're going to find a crouch position when we're there, we'll take a moment to just gently push the heels forwards and back. See if we can get a nice sense of release into the ankles and into the feet. Press the heels into the ground, let the head be heavy. And we'll start to gently roll up through the spine, shoulders gliding down the back, bringing the head on top, last thing of all, so you're gently coming up to standing. Take a nice deep breath, reaching really tall. Breathe in out and we'll let it all go. <sighs> Give it a good shake out. <sighs> Give yourself some round of applause. Well done, guys.